What just happened is called the rapture. You are most likely watching this video because someone who cares about you gave it to you and recommended that you watch it. Hopefully, you are watching this video before the rapture happens so that you won't have to go through or experience what's going to happen after the rapture. What you are going to see and hear in the next few minutes can literally change your life forever. If you have made a wise choice and decided to watch this video before the rapture, then you can avoid the horror and destruction and unparalleled death and devastation that's going to happen after the rapture, during a period of what the Bible calls the Great Tribulation. Only it's not going to be so great for those who have to go through it. If you are watching this video and millions of people around the world have suddenly disappeared, then it's already begun. You have been left behind. There's still hope, but know this, it will probably cost you your life. So what is the rapture? The rapture is a glorious event which God has promised to the church. The promise to return and remove and snatch up His church, living and dead, to heaven and deliver them from the time of judgment and tribulation that will come upon the earth when God's wrath is poured out on a rebellious and unbelieving world during the end times. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-53 The rapture is an event foretold in many parts of the Bible, particularly in the New Testament. It is an event that not only is talked about by Jesus Christ, but by the Apostle Paul, the Apostle John, and the Apostle Peter. The rapture is an event in which the Lord Jesus Christ descends from heaven in the clouds and with the sound of a trumpet calls from the earth all those who have chosen to put their faith, hope, and trust for eternity and salvation in Him. The rapture will be especially heavy in countries and areas that have a high proportion of Christians in the population. Many believe that the United States will be so hard hit that it will be reduced to third world status thanks to Christians occupying very high levels of government and social position. Any other country as well that has a high number of Christians in high social status will be just as adversely affected. Where did everyone go? And are they all right? You probably know someone who has disappeared. A wife, a husband, a child, a friend, and are wondering what has become of them. In that flash, all those that had accepted Jesus as their Savior were caught up to meet Jesus in the air. They traded their earthly bodies for bodies that are perfect, imperishable, and immortal. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown a perishable body. It is raised an imperishable body. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15, 42-44 now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. 
For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50-55 to They sit with Jesus now in heaven at a great banquet called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. They will live in great joy and know no sorrow. They will be with their King and live in love forever. They are well taken care of, and you don't have to worry about them. You just need to worry about yourself and the others left behind. Why didn't he take me? If you are watching this video after the rapture, you need to realize that you've been left behind. At this time, you may be feeling rejected by God. You might be saying to yourself, why didn't he take me? Or, I don't understand, I've led a good life. The problem isn't that God rejected you. The problem is that you rejected Him. By not committing your life to Jesus and by declining to follow Him, you have left Him with no choice but to leave you behind. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. Matthew 7, 21 for whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. Matthew 12, 50 Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. Isaiah 1, 18 Why it has happened Believers in Jesus were taken out of this world to spare them from the great wrath that has just begun to befall the planet. Much more than, having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. Romans 5, 9 And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 1, 10 for God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 Jesus' return for all his true believers was just a prelude to his final second coming. The second phase of Jesus' return is to set up his kingdom on earth. Jesus' kingdom is why this whole thing is happening. You see, we've come to the end of one age and will soon be beginning the age of Jesus' glorious reign right here on earth. But first, God must deal with rebellion, sin, before setting up his kingdom. God's going to use this intermediate time period you now live in to pour out his wrath on mankind for its continued refusal to accept his lordship. The time you live in now is called the tribulation. The first few minutes after the rapture. The first few minutes after the rapture is, in a phrase, pure chaos. Planes with flight crews who were believers will suddenly be pilotless and crewless and will crash in any number of places, killing thousands. Cars, trucks, and buses with believing drivers will suddenly be out of control, causing massive loss of life and hundreds of traffic jams, pileups, and highway disasters. Trains and subways, which had believing conductors and engineers, will be out of control and cause commuter snarls in dozens of places in hundreds of cities throughout the world. Ships and boats with believing captains and crews will suddenly be without their steering and will also be objects of destruction with oil spills, sinkings, crashes into port, and causing horrendous loss of life and billions of dollars in damage all over the world. People who were walking, talking, driving, studying, working, doing business, and in any other way interacting with a Christian will, in the immediate minutes after the rapture, be confused, dazed, surprised, even horrified and terribly afraid because those who were looking at a believer who just disappeared. 
Parents of children will suddenly be horrified, as any child under the age of accountability will likely be taken. Parents of newborns and expectant parents and mothers will suddenly be without their babies, infants, and toddlers, and will likely go literally and figuratively mad and crazy trying to find their precious little ones. Suicide rates will likely skyrocket out of control as parents who cannot find their missing children go crazy or into deep depression or both and choose to end their lives. People will be walking around stunned, in shock and disbelief. It will look like a scene from The Walking Dead or the zombie apocalypse. This will be a phenomenon all across the globe. Many countries will have high concentrations or high numbers of believers, could literally find cities or even states reduced to nearly uninhabited thanks to the rapture. Countries like the United States of America, Great Britain, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, South Korea, the Philippines, Russia, and many others could literally see cities become ghost towns in an instant as the rapture takes away large portions of the population. The first few minutes after the rapture will be a shock to all, and confusion, disaster, and chaos will ensue and be in control. After the initial shock of the rapture wears off and realization sinks in as to what has just happened, literally millions of people from all over the world who had previously heard the gospel but refused to accept God's gift of salvation at that time will likely fall to their knees and ask forgiveness and ask Jesus to be their Savior. More people are likely to be saved immediately after the rapture than at any other previous time in history. Millions will realize that they should not have procrastinated and that they should have accepted Christ into their hearts when they had the chance, but they let pride and a love for this world get in the way. Millions will likely realize that their crazy Christian friends, that they were always talking about the rapture, well, they weren't so crazy after all. Social media will be all abuzz like never before, frantically texting and tweeting, Are you there? And where are you? Hashtag rapture. Thousands of videos will be uploaded instantly, going viral, showing clips of people that suddenly vanished. Surveillance videos from all across the globe will be posted, showing the instant disappearance of millions. Every bulletin board, telephone pole, and streetlight pole will be covered with flyers asking, Have you seen this person? If the rapture has happened and you are one of the ones who had heard the gospel, but for whatever reason did not accept Christ as your Savior at that time, then before you watch any more of this video, pause it and do it right now. Do not delay any longer. The longer you wait as the tribulation progresses, the harder, if not nearly impossible, it will be later. Next, you need to get a Bible and stash it away, as most likely all Bibles will soon be banned. The Bible will be your instruction guide and bring peace and comfort and great joy amongst all the chaotic events going on all over the world. Protect it with your life. The last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, will be especially important to you, as it outlines all the events that are going to happen after the rapture. If, on the other hand, you've never heard the gospel and have no idea what's happening, keep watching this video. The First Hours After the Rapture Due to the rapture, police forces, firefighters, ambulance and medical vehicle operators, and the militaries of many, if not most, nations will be affected. Doctors, nurses, and other medical personnel will suffer huge losses of trained workers needed to help all the injured and dying that will crowd into hospitals, clinics, medical facilities, and health offices. Statistics have shown that in the USA, police officers, military personnel, firefighters, and medical vehicle operators and nurses tend to have quite considerably large numbers of believers, and these statistics are echoed in many other nations throughout the world. As with any natural disaster, especially on a nationwide or regionwide scale, looting, lawlessness, and criminal chaos are usually part of the equation when it comes to a nation or government attempting to regain control after such a disaster has occurred. 
Looting, which has plagued just about every large city in the world, especially in times of protest, civil violence and disobedience, and disaster, will run amok and out of control. Just think of the homes, vehicles, food, weapons, and material possessions that believers worldwide will have left behind. Hospitals will be overrun and overwhelmed with the injured and dying brought to their doors, thanks to the large number of accidents and wrecks following the rapture. Police officers will be inundated with phone calls from frantic parents, families and relatives and friends of the vanished, to the point communication relays begin breaking down. Fire stations and ambulances will run ragged from out-of-control fires and responding to emergency calls from those who have been injured or killed due to the rapture. Military installations around the world will be on full alert and will likely prepare for action in the face of personnel being raptured and the ones left behind left to literally try and figure out what has happened. The day after the rapture, a place you don't want to be. With all this chaos, violence, warfare, crime, bloodshed, disaster, and destruction taking place following the rapture, the world now will be a place that nobody wants to be. You must understand that this world will be like a prison without the guards. It will literally be hell on earth. And though there will be a season of peace, the events of the tribulation will be horrific. It will be a time in the world's history that will surpass every horror story writer's imagination and every slasher film's worst nightmares. What comes next? For starters, people are going to try to explain away the rapture with all sorts of wild theories, like possibly global warming or UFOs. So-called religious leaders are going to come out and say the church is still around because they didn't disappear. Whatever scenario the world uses to explain the rapture, you can be assured it is a lie. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program to bring you this breaking news. There are reports coming in from across the globe that suddenly hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, have just disappeared, vanished. One second they were there and then suddenly they were gone. This is not a joke, there are reports of car wrecks, plane crashes and massive traffic jams. People everywhere are running around in a panic looking for those that have disappeared. Let's now go to Pete at our Washington News Bureau and see if there is any news from the White House. Thank you, Seb. From our sources at the White House, which we're trying to verify at this very moment, it appears that the President and the First Lady are both among the missing that are disappeared. Sources say that they were on Air Force One returning from this weekend's economic conference that was held in Devo, Switzerland. And when the President's Chief of Staff, Steve Gagnon, went to alert the president about the reports of people vanishing, they were nowhere to be found. Furthermore, per the same sources, the vice president and his wife are also among the missing. According to the White House press secretary, Paul Hicks, the speaker of the House, Robert Carson, is currently meeting with various cabinet members, heads of the military, and the leaders of the UK, French, Russian, and Chinese governments and will be shortly addressing the nation and the whole world. Thank you, Pete. While we are waiting to hear from the Speaker of the House, Carson, let's check in with Ali in our Rome Bureau. Thank you, Seb. We have spoken to Vatican spokesman Federico Lombardi, and he assures us that the Pope is still here and that he has personally spoken to His Holiness. Therefore, this could not be the so-called rapture that many religious leaders around the world are proclaiming. Currently, the Holy Pontiff is meeting with the members of the Roman Curia, along with several high-ranking bishops and cardinals. An official statement from the Vatican is expected to be issued shortly, possibly even from the Pope himself. Thank you, Ali. Well, there you have it, folks. Certainly the most astounding news I have ever reported. I have not seen anything like this since 9-11. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Only the Bible has the truth about the rapture and what is going to come after the rapture. 
How do we know this is true? Because the Bible already tells us that this is going to happen. And this was written thousands of years ago. Only God sees from the beginning to the end and knows all things. Only God could have his prophets write down what is happening today, thousands of years in advance. One possible scenario is that there will be an announcement from the Vatican in conjunction with CERN and possibly even along with NASA, saying that superior beings that came to this planet thousands of years ago to seed this planet and to populate it have returned. The physicists from CERN using the Large Hadron Collider Particle Accelerator, under the guidance and direction from the astronomers at the Vatican Observatory, had indeed opened a portal and made contact with these superior beings several years ago. They will say these superior beings have returned to bring this planet into a new age of enlightenment. They will explain away the disappearance of the millions of people as those that did not fit into this new age of enlightenment and that a global cleansing was necessary to rid the world of those who were not tolerant. Those that were against a single global governance, those that denied climate change and were against the worldwide implementation of Agenda 21, those that were against same-sex marriage and abortion and were intolerant of those who are a part of the LGBT community. Out of all the chaos and uncertainty going on in the world after the rapture, A man will come on the scene, possibly even claiming to be one of the superior beings, and he will have all the answers to all the problems that plagued mankind for centuries. This man will bring peace to the Middle East. He will solve all the world's economic and social problems. He will usher in a one-world government and will, to the masses, seem like a savior for the world. Already, even before the rapture, as I am writing this, the world is desperately looking for a savior. The Muslim world is waiting and expecting their Mahdi, the twelfth Iman, at any time. Recently, one high-ranking Iranian parliament member went so far as to say, one can smell the end of times and the last Islamic messiah. Shiites, whose clerics rule with an iron fist, believe that at the end of times, the twelfth Imam, Mahdi, a ninth-century prophet, will reappear with Jesus Christ at his side, kill all the infidels, and raise the flag of Islam in all four corners of the world. Currently, Jews are waiting and watching for their Messiah to return and help them rebuild their temple. In the last few years, many prominent Jewish rabbis are reported saying Messiah's appearance is near, and more Jews are calling for the temple to be rebuilt than ever before. The rest of the world is looking for any kind of Savior to deliver them out of this mess. The Bible predicted all this in advance. The Bible refers to this man as the Antichrist. He will, to many, seem like Christ, but he is a false Christ. Furthermore, as one studies the description of the Antichrist in the Bible, amazingly we can see the Islamic Mahdi and the Jewish Messiah is one and the same. That's right, the twelfth Imam, Mahdi, and the Jewish Messiah are the same person that the Bible identifies as the Antichrist. Reasons for a Gap Between the Rapture and the Great Tribulation Scripture teaches that the rapture is imminent. It could happen at any time. Many Bible teachers, however, assume that the rapture will immediately precede the Great Tribulation, the final seven years of this age. However, there are several reasons why a gap of time between the rapture and that final seven-year period is likely. Here are some. After the rapture, there will be a season of unparalleled global chaos to such a degree that people will think the dead, or missing, will be the fortunate ones. Just think, even if only 1,000 people suddenly disappeared from a city, there would be accidents and great turmoil. It would be the story of the century. But at the rapture, millions of believers will be instantly translated to meet the Lord in the air. If only 1% of the population is removed, that would equal... 3 million in the U.S. alone, and 70 million globally. Every believer will vanish in an instant. 
The resulting global turmoil will require time for things to settle down. After the rapture, the Antichrist will soon be revealed. 2 Thessalonians 2, 5-9 and Revelation 6, 2. However, no scripture states that he will confirm the seven-year covenant immediately, Daniel 9, 27. In fact, he will not dominate until the three-and-a-half-year midpoint of the tribulation, Revelation 13.5. His rise to power will take time, perhaps several years, Daniel 8.23-25. Daniel chapter 7 lays out the sequence of the world's final kingdom before Christ returns. The fourth kingdom will initially emerge as a global government that shall devour the whole earth, verse 23. Then we are told that there will be ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, verse 24. They will be followed by the Antichrist, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. Compare this passage with Revelation 13 and 17. Today, the world is rapidly heading toward a global government and economic system. However, believers are hindering the emergence of a global government. After the rapture, when all believers have been removed and chaos ensues, a global Marshall Plan shall be implemented. Of course, the rise of a 10-region global government, followed by the rise of the Antichrist, will require time. Clearly, the Antichrist will not dominate or enforce a peace covenant until after the ten-region worldwide system is firmly established. All of this will take time. The woman of Revelation 17 rides the beast into power. She is one holding the reins at the start of this period. Therefore, it is improbable that the Antichrist will dominate and confirm a covenant with Israel and the world immediately after the rapture. The harlot's Babylonian-like religious system will come in Christ's name, not the Antichrist's name. She will present herself as queen of the true church, but she will be a seductive counterfeit. Clearly, the organizing of her global religious system will require time to set up. The two witnesses of Revelation 11 will preach for the first three and a half years of the final seven-year period. These men have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. This appears to coincide with the third and fourth seal judgments of Revelation 6, and the warnings of Jesus in Matthew 24, 4-7. If correct, then the first and second seal judgments would occur before the two witnesses arise, which means they would have to happen before the final seven-year period. Again, a few years' gap would be needed for these early prophecies to be fulfilled. The Magog invasion, Ezekiel 38, may provide the impetus for the Antichrist to confirm the covenant which will start Daniel's 70th week. But before this invasion, Ezekiel 38, 8-13 indicates Israel will become strong and very prosperous. The Psalm 83 and Isaiah 17 Middle East War and Isaiah's prophesied great victory followed by a period of peace and prosperity could well set the stage for the Magog invasion. Three times during the Magog invasion scenario, God is calling the Jews, My people Israel. Ezekiel 38, 14, and 16, chapter 39, verse 7. This beckons the question, where is the church? In Ezekiel 39, 7, God states that during this time, I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Therefore, by this time, the church must be gone, because believers are God's witnesses to the world. But during this period, God is once again using His people Israel as His primary witnesses to the nation. 
because it appears that the Magog invasion precedes the final seven years, this provides even more evidence for a gap of time between the rapture and the final seven years. The fifth seal, saints of Revelation 6, 9 through 11 ask, how long? Suggesting they were martyred during pre-tribulation events. They are also listed among the tribulation saints of Revelation 7 and 15. After the rapture, as persecution ramps up, it appears the Revelation 6 martyrs may come to faith and be tested during this period preceding the seven-year tribulation. The fact that they are crying out, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Verse 10 offers evidence that they are not in the Great Tribulation. Otherwise, they would probably know they are in the final seven-year period and would know how much time was left before the Lord judges the earth. A gap would also give Israel time to build her temple and prepare to reinstitute temple sacrifices, which are in place before the first half of the Great Tribulation. Revelation 11, 1 through 3. It also provides time for the woman's religious site to be erected in Babylon, Iraq, Zechariah 5.11, and the 10-region global government to organize, Daniel 7, Revelation 13. In summary, there is no scripture that states that the rapture will immediately precede the tribulation. Further, a short stage setting gap of perhaps a few years, followed by the final seven-year period, seems to agree with the whole prophetic picture. This gap will likely be more than a few months because so much takes place during this time period. However, this gap will likely be relatively short because Jesus likened these signs to birth pangs, which always increase in frequency and intensity and tighten as delivery nears. Matthew 24, 8. Because the stage-setting events are already positioning in rapid succession, it appears that this gap will not be long. Revelation 22:20. 20. So in a brief summary of the tribulation, Christ will remove all born-again believers from the earth in an event known as the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54. At the judgment seat of Christ, these believers will be rewarded for good works and faithful service during their time on earth, or will lose rewards, but not eternal life, for lack of service and obedience. 1 Corinthians 3, 11-15, 2 Corinthians 5, 10. The Antichrist, the beast, will come into power and will sign a covenant with Israel for seven years. Daniel 9:27. This seven-year period of time is known as the Tribulation. During the Tribulation, there will be terrible wars, famines, plagues, and natural disasters, and God will begin pouring out His wrath against sin, evil, and wickedness. The Tribulation will include the appearance of the four horsemen of the Apocalypse and the seven seal, trumpets, and bowl judgments. About halfway through the seven years, the Antichrist will break the peace covenant with Israel and make war against it. The Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation and will set up an image of himself to be worshipped in the Jerusalem temple. Daniel 9, 27, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 10, which will have been rebuilt. The second half of the tribulation is also known as the Great Tribulation, Revelation 7:14 and the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 37. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist will launch a final attack on Jerusalem, culminating in the Battle of Armageddon. Jesus Christ will return, destroy the Antichrist and his armies, and cast them into the lake of fire, Revelation 19, 11-21. Christ will then bind Satan in the abyss for a thousand years, and he will rule his earthly kingdom for this thousand-year period. Revelation 20, 1 through 6. At the end of the thousand years, Satan will be released, defeated again, and then cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 7 through 10. For all eternity. 
Christ then judges all unbelievers, Revelation 20, 10 through 15, at the great white throne judgment, casting them all into the lake of fire. Christ will then usher in a new heaven and a new earth, and the new Jerusalem, the eternal dwelling place of believers. There will be no more sin, sorrow, or death. Revelation 21 and 22. How do we know when the seven-year tribulation begins? The tribulation officially begins when the Antichrist signs a covenant for seven years with the nation of Israel. This is the event that inaugurates the tribulation period. Daniel 9.27 Once this event happens, you can actually count down the 2,520 remaining days of the tribulation period, seven Jewish calendar years of 360 days each. 7 times 360 equals 2,520. Once this covenant, which is most likely a peace treaty guaranteeing Israel seven years of protection and possibly even making sure the Jews will be able to rebuild their temple, a series of judgments will commence upon the world. These judgments are grouped into three sets of seven, and each set of seven judgments will increase in intensity and severity. While it's possible that there could be some overlapping of these judgments, most likely they will play out separately over the entire seven-year period. It is truly hard to comprehend the scope of the death, destruction, and carnage that will be poured out upon this planet and those that are left behind. The Bible says of the tribulation in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. To help paint you a better picture, let's examine these judgments and have a closer look at some of the major players and events of the tribulation. And if you are watching this video before the tribulation, I want to point out a couple more reasons why I take a pre-trib stance. The first set of seven judgments, the seal judgments. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Christ opens the first seal of the seven-sealed scroll, and the rider on the white horse, most likely the Antichrist, appears, using diplomacy and the promise of peace to establish his one-world government. Revelation 6, 3, and 4 The opening of the second seal, and the rider of the red horse introduces a great world war. Revelation 6, 5, and 6 The opening of the third seal, and the rider on the black horse, begins the suffering of famine and inflation, the aftermath of war. Revelation 6, 7 and 8. The opening of the fourth seal and the rider of the pale horse results, as do all wars, in death. But in this case, it totals one-fourth of the people and living creatures. By today's population standards, that would amount to one and a half billion people. Revelation 6, 9 through 11. This passage introduces the martyrdom of those who are converted under the preaching of the 144,000 Jewish witnesses described in chapter 7. An innumerable number of people receive Christ and are martyred by the government leader and harlot, the religious system described in chapter 17, who gets her power from the Antichrist. Note that evangelism during this period is back in the hands of the Jews. Since the church is absent, the 144,000 Apostle Paul-type believers will make powerful evangelists. Revelation 6, 12-17 The sixth seal exhibits the wrath of God poured out in the form of a mighty earthquake, the like of which has never been experienced. It is so severe, the people call on the rocks to fall on them. Revelation 8, 1-6 the seventh seal introduces the seven trumpet judgments, ending the first quarter of the tribulation period and preparing for an even worse period called the day of his, God's, wrath. The second set of seven judgments, the trumpet judgments. 
Revelation 8, 7, the first trumpet judgment results in one third of all trees and green grass being burned up by the hail, fire, and blood cast upon the earth. Revelation 8, 8 and 9, the second trumpet sees a great mountain of sulfur falling into the sea and destroying a third part of the sea and all living creatures in it and a third of the shipping vessels. Revelation 8, 10 and 11. The third trumpet causes a great star or meteor called wormwood, or bitter, to fall on the fountains of water and third of the rivers to turn bitter, resulting in the deaths of millions. Revelation 8, 12. The fourth trumpet results in one-third less sun, moonlight, and stars, extending the darkness of night. Revelation 8:13. A special angel flies around the earth, warning that those worst judgments are to come. Revelation 9, 1-12 through 12. The fifth judgment introduces hideous, demon-like creatures, such as scorpions and locusts, out of the bottomless pit. Not able to kill men, they torture them so badly that they will seek death and will not find it. Revelation 9, 13 the sixth trumpet introduces 200 million horsemen, demon spirit-like death angels, who kill one-third of the people. This will occur between the 40th and 42nd month of the first part of the tribulation, which brings to 50% the population that is destroyed by God before the midpoint of the tribulation. These individuals have taken the mark of the beast and are considered incorrigibles, since estimates of upwards to a quarter of those living at that time still will be saved under the preaching of the 144,000 mentioned in Revelation 7-9, it is possible that 75% of the population will have been destroyed during the first half of the tribulation period. Do you understand why I say that even a mid-tribulation view of Christ's coming for His church would mean enormous suffering to the millions of believers? It seems much more reasonable, particularly in the light of his promises, to save his church from the wrath to come, that he would save his church from that hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. That would certainly be characteristic of our loving, merciful, forgiving Heavenly Father and Bridegroom. The saints who are martyred during the tribulation are not part of the church. They are defined in Revelation 7.14 as the ones who come out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 11, 3-14 The two witnesses prophesy 1,260 days, a ministry which, if taken literally, would correspond with the 42 months of judgments already described. Obviously, these two witnesses are real people with miraculous powers like Moses and Elijah, here to preach and witness during the entire first half of the tribulation. It may be through their witness that the 144,000 are saved and sent out preaching. As dreadful a time as this will be, God is faithful to provide plenty of gospel preaching to the nations. Revelation 11:15. The seventh trumpet judgment introduces the awesome events described in chapters 12 through 18 and the most severe set of judgments yet reported, the vile judgments. Revelation 17, 1 through 8. This describes the destruction of the Babylonian-like false religious system, the great harlot, which will merge all the religions of the world during the first part of the tribulation which will take place easily after the church is raptured. This system will be so powerful that it will dominate both the Antichrist, the beast, and the ten kings at that time. But because of their hatred for the harlot, at the midpoint of the tribulation, they will make war on her and kill her. Revelation 13, 1-3 In the process of killing the harlot, Mystery Babylon, the false religious system, somehow, the Antichrist is killed and gets a deadly wound that is healed. In chapter 12, Satan himself is cast out of heaven, where he has been the accuser of our brethren, and now he enters Antichrist's body and resurrects him to a new and even more vicious life. 
Revelation 13, 4 through 10. Antichrist, now incarnated, will force the remaining people of the earth to worship him, except those whose names are in the Lamb's book of life. See 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 10. Revelation 13, 11 through 18. The false prophet will replace the slain religious system, forcing people to worship Antichrist and his image, or be killed. Everyone will be compelled to display a 666 mark in order to hold a job and buy and sell. Plainly, if the church were to go through the tribulation, she would not survive it. And I find no scriptural evidence that any believers will remain at the end of the tribulation to be raptured, if that event is post-trib. Remember, the worst half of the tribulation period, which our Lord termed the Great Tribulation, has not even yet begun. The last 42-month period is covered by the vile judgments. The third set of seven judgments, the vile or bold judgments. Revelation 16, 1 and 2. The first vile causes giant sores on those who rejected Christ and instead accepted the mark of the beast, signifying their worship of him. Revelation 16, 3. The second vial is poured out on the sea, turning it to blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Revelation 16.4 The third vial turns the rivers and other sources of water to blood, and especially just judgment because the people remaining had killed so many tribulation saints. Revelation 16.8 and 9 The fourth vial will intensify the sun's heat, until ungodly men blaspheme the name of God. Revelation 16, 10, and 11. The fifth vial will cause darkness to cover the throne of Antichrist and his entire kingdom. The sores will continue unrelentingly, producing such agony that men will gnaw their tongues for pain and blaspheme God and refuse to repent. Revelation 16, 13 through 16. The sixth vial sends lying demon spirits out to the kings of the whole world to bring them down to the battle of that great day of God Almighty, more popularly known as the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16, 17-21 The seventh vial results in a judgment of Almighty God that destroys the entire world system and judges all unsaved men severely. But even though enormous hailstones fall, the unregenerate still refuse to repent. This judgment is so devastating that it prepares the world for the coming of Christ to set up his earthly kingdom. Revelation 18, 1 through 24, the destruction of commercial and governmental Babylon, the new world order for which man has yearned ever since his rebellion at Babylon now occurs, possibly during the seventh vial since it fits there, verse 19, just before earth's final judgment. It will totally collapse the Antichrist system and further pave the way for the best event of the tribulation. Revelation 19, 11 through 21. We witness the glorious appearing of Christ in power and great glory as King of Kings and Lord of Lords to set up his thousand year reign on the earth. The Ultimate Danger of Missing Out on the Rapture The Antichrist The most dangerous aspect of the days following the rapture will be, undoubtedly, the rise of the Antichrist. Considering all the disasters, wars, strife, confusion, criminal activities, and all the other horrible events and situations that will come about because of the rapture, a person will come forward who will seem to have all the answers. This person will seem to have superhuman powers insomuch that he will cause miraculous signs to take place. He will preach peace and safety and will take control of the world and will appear to solve all the problems of the rapture and may even take credit for the rapture himself, stating that he has gotten rid of all the undesirables, the narrow-minded, the haters and bigots, and removed all those who have stopped progress. He may even put on a show of causing a person to disappear in the same way as Christians were taken out of the world, 
and stating that he did so to bring the world closer to the utopia that humankind has striven for since the dawn of time. Everything he will do will appear to be for the betterment of mankind and for the earth, and by his actions he will appear to heal the earth, to cleanse the land and water of the disaster that took place. Every question that you have for him, he will appear to have an answer for. On the outside and on the surface, he will appear to be holy, righteous, good, and kind, and because of his charisma and power, the powers that be will give him all the power he desires. The truth is, this person will be the very antithesis of Jesus Christ. Everything he will do will really be for the express purpose of erasing the presence of Jesus Christ from this world and to steal your very soul. He will preach peace safety, and prosperity. But in reality, what he will do is bring sudden and worse destruction onto the earth, such as has never been seen before. He will seek to destroy and eradicate the nation of Israel, the Jews, and all Christians, and he will set up an extermination system for all undesirables that Adolf Hitler could only have dreamt about in his wildest dreams. And he will be far, far more successful. He will compel everyone on the world to swear allegiance to him by taking a mark of identification. He will demand worship from the world, and the Bible says that everyone will worship him. His false prophet will preach him and instruct everyone to give him due and proper reverence and proclaim him as a god. Finally, he will appear to be assassinated in front of the whole world and this could happen at the beginning of the tribulation period. And though he will appear to die and be pronounced dead, the whole world will see him rise from the dead. All of this will serve one purpose and one purpose only. In the end, your soul being cast forever into the lake of fire and salvation being lost for you. Further, In the second half of his reign, the Antichrist will desecrate a newly built Jewish temple, proclaim himself God, and the world will undergo horrible disasters, far worse than are described here. Three-quarters to four-fifths of the world's population will perish, and the world, the earth itself, unalterably destroyed. However, the ultimate danger is to you. Unless you accept the free gift of salvation from Jesus... There is no hope. Do not take the mark. If you take the mark of the Antichrist, you will be forever lost, with no hope of salvation. And if you survive the disasters that will come as a result of the rapture, you very well could be killed in any one of the numerous godly judgments that will fall upon this earth. You may think that you will be able to hold off and not take the mark, but you will be compelled to, either by hunger or fear of torture and death. Most likely, if it came down to watching your family die of starvation or watching them be tortured and threatened with death, you would take the mark rather than see them suffer any longer, thus forfeiting forever the opportunity to receive salvation and eternal life. The only escape to this is to trust in Jesus Christ today.